From ancient civilization to today's opioid epidemic, there's a lot to talk about with this popular drug. So let's go. Ancient Egyptians were one of the first societies to document the use of the poppy plant to help with pain and to induce sleep. It was affectionately called the joy plant. Ancient Greeks, Romans, and Arabians used and traded the drug. Opium became popular in the 11th century in China and made its way to Europe by the 17th century. The drug was present when the U.S. was founded in 1776. In 1817, Frederick Surturner isolated morphine and in 1832, codeine was discovered. Opium was mainly smoked back then and opium dens were extremely popular, especially in larger cities. The hypodermic syringe was invented in 1853 and made it easier for morphine to take effect in the body. The Civil War broke out in 1861 and after the war many soldiers were addicted to morphine. Later this became known as soldier's disease. Near the end of the century many people were addicted to these drugs and a big factor was the legal and unregulated nature of these drugs. For instance, in 1898, Bayer sold heroin over the counter. This would begin to change. 1906 established the Food and Drug Administration. The Harrison Narcotics Act and the Anti-Heroin Act made heroin illegal and other opioids available only by prescription. There was still a stigma associated with the drugs and as a result, opioids were only prescribed for acute pain for a very long time. 1970 gave us the Controlled Substances Act and with its schedules, heroin was classified as a Schedule I substance while many other prescription opioids were classified in lower schedules. Around this time, many doctors were more in favor of non-pharmaceutical methods for treating pain. These methods could include surgeries and nerve blocking procedures. In 1978, Percocet was approved by the FDA. In 1980, Vicodin was approved and was on the market, but something to note was a letter was published in the New England Journal of Medicine called Addiction Rare in Patients Treated with Narcotics. This letter is credited with fuel in today's opioid crisis. During this decade, many advocacy groups advocated for the use of opioids for terminally ill patients. The World Health Organization's guidelines in 1986 recommended opioids for cancer patients only if no other options were available. Then things were quiet for a while, until 1995 when Oxycontin is approved by the FDA and it's marketed as safe and non-addicting. Oxycontin is on the market one year later and is aggressively marketed to doctors. In 2001, patients' pain levels are required to be taken. Those patients with high chronic pain are prescribed Oxycontin and other opioids. As a result, prescriptions increase at an alarming rate. This comes to a head in 2007 when Purdue Pharma is successfully sued by the U.S. for knowingly marketing their products as non-addicting. In addition to monetary penalties, Purdue Pharma began to produce tamper-proof medications. This was supposed to make the problem better. It didn't. In 2013, it was reported that over 27,000 babies had been born in the previous decade addicted to opioids. This is called neonatal abstinence syndrome. Overdose deaths skyrocketed and the federal government got involved with the DEA arresting many of the bad actors and the CDC released guidelines for prescribing opioids. But there was still a major stigma. A good first step to combating the stigma came in 2016 when Surgeon General Vivek Murthy said, uh, They see it as a character flaw, as evidence of a moral failing. But what we know very clearly from the science is that addiction is actually none of those things. It's a chronic disease of the brain. We have good scientific studies that in fact tell us that addiction impacts the circuits in your brain and in specific parts of the brain that affect impulse control, 
decision making, and your stress and reward response. 2017 was a big year. The President's Commission on Combating Drug Addiction and the Opioid Crisis was formed and a few companies, most notably CVS Pharmacy, began to crack down on opioid prescription releases. 2018 saw federal funding increase to $6 billion to combat the crisis. The Surgeon General stated the importance of using naloxone to reverse an opioid overdose. Also this year, fentanyl became the lead drug involved in overdoses. In 2019, the average American has greater odds to die from an opioid overdose than a car accident. But there was some good news in July. For the first time in over 20 years, the number of overdose deaths declined by 5.1%. Later in the year, several high-profile lawsuits were filed against many pharmaceutical companies. Hit the hardest was Purdue Pharma, who filed for bankruptcy in September. And that leads us to today. As you can see, we've come a long way since the Joy Plant, but we still have a long way to go before everyone knows about the true nature of opioids. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. Have a wonderful day.